All right, everybody, welcome to On The Screws Golf. We'd like to thank you for being here on the stream. So what? And welcome to DC F&P, baby. And again, thank you so much for attending, and please consider subscribing. All right, everybody, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. All right, first things first, again, this stream brought to you by American Honey Sting. Not only does this product taste great, it absolutely goes down extremely smooth, but with the Sting version, it gives you a kick. So again, get that out of the way. Great product, go get you some. All right, USAM Tour, Sunday, June 27th, 2021, Fairview, PA, Whispering Woods. There you have it. So um, as, you can, uh, as you can see, we're going out on the tour and uh on the real course to put ourselves in a position to make the um the year end championship okay so let's get into it and let's take a look at some of the things that we're going to have to accomplish all right so here we are um pittsburgh um usam tour and again you can see right here we're going to be playing in the whispering woods in fairview pa cost me 110 dollars June 27th, it's just the, uh, the Pittsburgh tour page. Go ahead and take a look at the, um, the actual tournament page. I wanted to take a look at some of the stats here. You could see it's a par 72, 60, about 6,500 yards, 72.2 rating, slope of 141. The average par 3 is 171, playing the par 4s at about an average of 371, and the par 5s averaging at 521. You can take a look really quickly here at the, um, the scorecard from the blue tees. 426, 152, 505, 288, 282, 183, 523, 423, and 374 for the front nine. Coming back in, you're at 451, par 4. It's a beast. 165, 518, 356, 184, 536. Another pretty significantly long par 5. 300 yard par 4, 398 par 4, and then a strong finishing hole at 411. So, a couple things uh, I want to go over here. I need, think I need to go back to the Pittsburgh group. Move down here. We need to go ahead to the Hogan division, which is right here. And you can see that um, we are in second place currently, five points behind Mark Bolitnikoff. Okay. Now, Mark and I are both playing in this tournament. Let's take a look at the individuals who have entered right here. So you can see Mark is five points ahead of me. So I will be going head to head with Mark. Um, and that's really who I'm looking to play my best against. And again, only reason is we want the year end trophy and in that first place position. Now, what does that mean? Well, I can go back here for a minute. Sorry. What does that mean? That means that um, year end gets us right here. National Championship in La Costa, California. And that is September 13th through the 16th for anyone who's not a senior. I do qualify for the seniors, but I'm playing in the regular open category. So you can see that, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the championship here. We're gonna be playing four different courses over four days to find out who will be the actual champion and uh, this will be in Carlsbad, California, excuse me, California, I can't talk. Um, and you can see maybe at a later date, we'll go ahead and go over 
this actual course um, for all of you as we get closer. But what we want to go over today is this course. And we want to talk about Whispering Woods in Fairview, PA, which is coming up in two weekends. So what we want to do is basically start off on hole number one. Move in here. And you'll see that this hole is a, um, it says from the back tees, 455 or 445, par four. What we're going to do is we're going to play it from these middle tees right here, probably. So it's a 264 yard drive. It's probably a little bit too far for us. So 250s, we'll just say is our average. So, and then we want to see what we have coming in to the green. And... 172. So driver, six iron, looks like uh, what we'll be playing there. Okay. Hole number two, move it up to here, to the middle of the green, 152. So that's a, that's, you back off a seven iron there. Just nice, solid seven iron, but uh, you're not aggressive with it. Hole number three, move, move a little bit out so we can see what's going on. T box here, get it out to here. 308 is way too far. That looks good. 251. Uh, this is the par five, obviously. So we'll place our drive there. This is going to be our second shot. Let's see how far that is. 218. So uh, we're going to go driver, five wood, and uh, hopefully be on the green putting for eagle. Okay. Hole number four. Let's play it from, I think that's a tee box. Yeah. So we'll play it from here. Put it out to here. So that's a 200 yard drive. So that right there is going to be another five wood, maybe even a three hybrid. And then from 200 into the green, Oops, sorry about that. I closed in, so we're right here. This is so so touchy. This uh, this application. Click and click. So sixty-seven yards. So anywhere between a three hybrid and a five wood, and then a forty-eight degree, about sixty percent of the forty-eight degree wedge. Okay, that's hole four. Taking a look at hole number five, let's move out a little bit. Again, we'll move the tee box over here, put it down in here. So you're at 211 yards. We can probably scoot that down further to 230. So that could be a five wood and a three wood, anywhere between three wood and five woods. So we'll just say we'll be in the middle here, put it to there, and then hit it on the green, 66 yards. So five wood, three wood, wedge, half a wedge. Okay, another 48 yard, 48 degree, and that's about half, 50%. Okay, hole number six, R3. We'll move this up on the front tee box here, and then middle of the green, 171 yards, another nice six iron, just a nice solid six iron up the hill. Get it on the green, see if we can't get a few putts. Make a birdie there. Hole seven, another long par five. So move it up to this tee box, get it out to here, 243. So let's move it over to about here, right short of the bunker, 250. And then we'll move it from 250 all the way up to here, which is 219. So that's a five wood. You don't want to push it anymore and get it over into the rough or anything like that. So we'll just try to keep it in the short grass. And then from here, just a short 50-yard pitch shot on the green, putting for birdie. All right, so nice-looking fairway there, nice and large and expanse. So should be able to take nice, smooth swings. Don't get over-aggressive. Don't get your swing playing offline and just hit it down the middle each time. Get it on the green, putt for birdie. Give yourself no less than a par there. Okay, so here... 240, probably want to see if we can't. Uh, 
sorry. That's interesting. It's not working now. All right, so that's fine. So we'll put it here. 186. So driver, uh, six iron, five iron, something like that. Looks a little bit downhill. So driver, six iron. So that's eight. Let's go ahead and find hole number nine, which is right here. Go ahead and back, back that out. T box here. Bring it out to here. 227 is probably a little bit too short. Don't want to get anywhere near that bunker if we can help it. That's 244. It's, it's probably a little bit too far. So let's go ahead and shorter that. 235, so a three wood. And then obviously, once you get your three wood, bust it on from 124. That's just a full sam a full wedge. So driver, or excuse me, three wood wedge on hole number nine. See if we can make par there. So then we have to move over here all the way up to hole number 10. Again, try to move out so we can see what we're doing. I think this is the tee box here. Get it out here to 274. Way too much for us. That's about right. 250. It's a driver. And then 184 yards in. Um, so that's a, uh, a five iron. So driver, five iron on this 482 yard par four from the very tips. Okay. So moving it up 40 yards. So you're talking 440, par four, hole number 10. Probably playing the hardest, number one handicap on the course. So that right there, you make par, um, you're gaining one on 70, 80% of the field. So, all right, hole number 11. Move it up here, middle of the green. You're looking at 159 yards, so that's 160 yards. You know, just a nice seven iron again, put it in the middle of the green, give yourself a chance at uh, making yourself a birdie. Number 12. This is a 525 yard par five. We're going to move it up to the this tee box, bounce it out to here. That's 216. 50 to here it's driver and then take it from here put it down in here to 181 if you want to go for it to the flag it's 217 so i don't know too many non-professionals who are going to rope a 217 yard five wood right on the green from there but you know if we move it and see that there's you know, some good space back here so you can just chip back on and still putt for birdie might not be a bad thing but also probably the smart play is like right in here 178 maybe right in here 170 yard nice little six iron right to there and then obviously just have a 55 yard pitch onto the green guaranteed on in three going for a birdie putt so again risk reward what do you want to do how do you feel that day did you screw up, you know, holes prior to that? So, you know, all about course and bag management. Okay, hole 13. Move it up to this tee box. Bust it out here, 215. Right into, into that spot. You don't want to go too far. So 224, so you're talking five wood, maybe a soft three wood. And then once you're out to there, Nice little 104, 107 yard pitching wedge right into the green. And that's all the way choked down to the iron for me. Okay, full swing, choke down all the way down to the iron and uh, stay on plane, hit it on the green. Putting for birdie. Okay, hole 14. Nice R3 up the hill. 163 yards. So again, Really soft six iron choke down or a nice full seven iron, a little bit aggressive. Okay, that's hole 14. Let's take a look at hole 15, which is a 561 yard par five. So again, pretty significant distance. So let's um, bust this out to 248, 250. 
then we'll put our second shot right here and then maybe go down to there 243 that's way too far we'll come back here which is 212 so driver five wood pitching wedge that is a long hole right there so 561 yard par five so that's going to take two really great shots that can't be missed so driver 250 210 to 215 yard five wood three wood whatever you have get into this landing zone and then a nice little what is it 70 yards 79 yard uh, shot into the green give yourself a look at birdie again protecting this course with the par fives all right hole 16 sorry about that Ooh, zoom in give you guys a little bit of a stomach ache all right 231 is not bad there if you can hit driver out to here to 254 you're right in the neck this is a 320 yard par four so let's say we just neck it right in there and you have a 40 yard pitch shot so again Get the driver safe and straight. Get it out in here in that 2240 to 250 range. And you have yourself anywhere between less than 100 yards no matter what. So be safe on that. Don't be uber aggressive. Yet at the same time, don't sit back on your laurels. You got to take advantage of some of these holes. Hole 17. I believe the tee box will be right there. Bust it out to here. That's 288. Too far. 264 is too far. 250 is good. Um, and once we get to there, take it in at 132 yards. So driver, nine iron, nice soft nine iron right in there. Give ourselves another look at birdie. And then, of course, final hole, 18. Where are we? Here we are down here. Open that up a little bit. See where we are. So. A to there. See what happens if you bring it out to here. 224. So can you bust it by everything right down here? 260. 250. So you're going to, you know, as all of these architects do, they put these bunkers in play to the average drive, right? So if you push it, you're in the bunker. It's going to make it that much more difficult to get it home. So this is a 435 yard R4 finishing hole. What a great hole. Now, obviously, if you're back here, 198, you're going to have these trees here. You know, you're going to have a tough line. So you may have to just bring it over to here. So I'm going to try to play the, the drive right over to here, about 240, 250 right here. Have ourselves that second shot in for 164. So driver, six iron, driver, seven iron, and uh, see if we can get it on the green and give ourselves at least a birdie putt and then hopefully solidify that par, okay? So that's it, Whispering Woods. Um, starting on June 27th, 12 noon. This right here is, you know, something that we have to play well in. Love to take first place that put us in about... 120 points that would really separate myself from Mark. Um, I wish Mark all of the best. Um, we'll give you an update um, after this tournament. We did play Latrobe Country Club um, two Sundays ago, and uh, I did. Uh, I didn't play well, um, and here's the reason why. So, you know, in this tour, they take. Your low, they throw it out. They take your high and they throw it out, okay? And then they average all of those other scores to keep you in the correct division. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really didn't have much to worry about by staying in the Hogan division between an 8 and 11.9 handicap. Yet, I was creeping down to possibly go into the player, which is 4 to 7.9. And uh, so on the first hole um, at Latrobe, made a bogey. Second hole, made a bogey. Third hole, legitimately, I made a 12. 
So <laughs> my first three wood out of bounds onto the road, drop, hit it out of bounds in a lateral, drop. So hit, sh chunked it into the weeds, chunked it out, laying six, hit it over the leg, skipped it over the leg, hit these rocks and bounced directly right out of the la out of bounce lateral, had to drop over there, chipped it out, hit it on, two putted for a 12. So my day was pretty much over at that point, as we knew. So I was playing for birdies and, you know, things like that. So I made a bogey, a birdie, a bunch of pars all the way through the front nine. Back nine, I started off with a couple bogeys. Then I made a, a six on a par three because I did this double cross five iron hook way left, made a triple there. Then the next hole is where it all fell apart. So I hit this amazing drive, best drive of the day. And it went through the fairway and bounced up about a foot and a half from the bottom base of the ground into a tree. And it stayed there, it got stuck in these little branches. So of course I had to take a drop, pull it out, take a drop, no, you know, no close to the hole, one club length. And I was in a group of five trees and I couldn't, so I bunched it out about a foot or two, bunched it up again. Then my next shot hit it into the tree and it came all the way back about 35 yards. So I punched it over the green, chipped it on. I was on in seven and I five putted, I hate to say this, but on purpose. So I putted away from the hole, putted away from the hole again, putted it about 10 feet, just lagged it up, and then I put it in for a 12. And why would you say I did that? Well, my high score for the year in a snowstorm, the beginning of the season was a 91. So you're going to throw out your highest score. So I wanted to make sure I beat that 91. So in the end, at the end of the day, with a bunch of pars and a seven at the end of the, on 18, I shot 99. So in the end, that 99 gets thrown out, my 73 gets thrown out, and I'm left with a bunch of 83s, 82s, 79s, 81s, and a 91. And that's my scoring average for the tournament, which keeps me solidified in the Hogan division. So, didn't play very well um, on hole number three for a 12, but I played really well, hit the ball really good and solid throughout the remainder of the day. But then, you know, I got thinking to myself, I'm, I'm not really making any birdies or runs at birdies today. I just got to make sure that I can get higher than a 91 so that stays as my high. And my next highest, 99, would get kicked out. So that's the reason for the 99 at La Trobe Country Club. So 160 bucks I wasted, really. Um, but there was a method to the madness. So, all right, everybody, June 27th, next, uh, next event, but we're trying to position ourselves to be the number one ranked in the Pittsburgh division so that we make Carlsbad Cavern, um, California and the national championship on the 13th through the 16th of September. All right, everybody, that's it. Hope you're having a great day. Best of luck in the uh, Bryson DeChambeau nine-hole cup that's going on at Golf Clash today. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, everybody. Welcome to On The Screws Golf. We'd like to thank you for being here on the stream. So what? And welcome to DCF&P, baby. And again, thank you so much for attending. And please consider subscribing.